Welcome, everyone. It is Wednesday, 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Our typical time is Tuesday, not Wednesday, but we postponed today. I appreciate you all tolerating that. Let's go ahead and get started today. Um, my name is Mike. I'll be your host. Let's get all of you to jump into the chat and introduce yourselves. Let us know where you're from. Let me know you can hear me. It also proves you know where the chat is. This is how you'll be conversing with me today. So let's see who we have uh, joining us. Yes. All right. Hi, Wayne from Alabama. Yisrael. Did I say that right? From New York. Uh, Kristen from Chicago. Hi, Kristen. Angela from Wisconsin. Yeah. Hi, Angela. I remember you from last week. I was in Madison, uh, I think, uh, in September. Yeah, pretty, pretty place. West Palm Beach, Louise. How are you? And Heather from Houston. It's getting hot. Getting hot in Houston. Hot in West Palm Beach. Even hot in Chicago, I think, now. All right. Okay, well, thanks, everyone, for... Um, I know there's other people here, but clearly you guys can hear me. Uh, Joby? Am I saying that right, Joby? I'm gonna just trying to guess. <clears throat> Pardon me. Okay. Let's go ahead and get started, guys. We'll, uh, we'll just walk through the beginning stages, and then we'll start to look for questions. Um, as what you're looking at here is the Sweet Dash website. If you haven't had started a free trial already, I definitely encourage you to do that. Uh, that's your best way to get a look at the software, to start working with it, and decide if it's going to be working for you. Uh, along that journey, the documentation is here at help.sweetdash.com. Uh, before you send... Of course, we want you to send questions to the help team. We love to help. But before you send the question, you might try typing the question in the documentation. Um, we have we spend an inordinate amount of time every week making sure that everything is up to date and um, screenshots, links, everything that you would need to find your way through the knowledge. If you're more of a visual learner, then uh, Sweet Dash. Academy is a good place for you. That's where all the videos that are current and applicable to the current platform um, features you can find here. Work yourself through the Simple Start series. Then there's a Tips and Tricks series. All these are very valuable. Especially in the Tips and Tricks series, you'll find walkthroughs that will turn a lot of light bulbs on. Uh, we get that feedback quite a bit especially something like this one or even this uh, automatic automate project creation and so on. Yep. Uh, so yep, Izzy, I'm going to call you. Uh, it'd be beneficial to have much more videos available. Yes, that's true. Um, so we're always working in that direction. Make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel to be notified when new videos are out. Um, in the meantime, yeah, you can work yourself through through these. Episode five of the Simple Start series Angela is asking about is uh, probably in the next few weeks, Angela. We're trying to get back to that one. Uh, as in all of these episodes, we're going to always uh, allude to the next episode, and then sometimes that next episode ends up being out into the future. But... Um, a lot of the things that are planned for episode five are really covered in something like this one, for example, forms and lead gen funnel. This is more generic, not using the exact examples there from episode five, but uh, it's very similar concepts, right? Try this one, Angela. This is really, really similar to what would be covered in episode five, just using a different um, example, right? So I would say that's a good place to start. Let me turn the chat back on since we're referencing. Uh, and then also the community. The Sweet Dash community is open to everyone. Even if you don't have an account, if you're a free trial, if you're not a paid member, paid account, you can come here. You will need to create a new account for security reasons. We require that you have a new, um, uh, use your email and create a new password. It's not the same password as you log into Sweet Dash. Uh, and you can do that here in the, in the uh, login page, you just click register or sign up and you'll create a new password and then you'll log in and you'll be have access to the community where you can inter interact with other suite mates, talk about 
strategies and use cases, etc. Okay. So before we start, uh, just to talk about how this webinar goes. So some software webinars are full walkthroughs of the platform. Uh, we're not able to do that with Sweet Dash because uh, due to several reasons. First of all, it would take forever to get through all the tools. Uh, secondly, there is no step one, step two, step three that works for every user. Uh, and you guys can just, and by the way, you can just uh, post directly into the chat, uh, anything, you have, anything that you're posting. Uh, but there is no step one, step two, step three that works for everyone. So you're not going to find that in our instructions. Here's how you do it, so, because there is not one way. Uh, Sweet Dash is really a software that enables you to customize software for your business. It's modular, it's uh, interchangeable, everything's customizable. So um, first you need to figure out how you, what you need to uh, accomplish, right? What, is, what are my flows? What are my funnels? What are the things I'm trying to do? Then you'll need to use the Sweet Dash components to create that. There are a lot of great examples in the videos. There are a lot of detailed examples in the community, for example. Uh, examples, for example. So there are a lot of places that you can look at very at constructions that may or may not rhyme or be close to what you're trying to accomplish, and then you can extrapolate from there. But it's not too difficult, right? I mean, we're talking about an intake form typically that is on your website that adds users into a CRM that you are then um, tagging them with a you know putting them in what we call circles, which is basically you're typing your your customers as they come in you're assigning them to specific email marketing lists and and on and on all the different options that are available and then you work with them from there and and create and design experiences for one type of customer or or client or two types of clients and and sort them put them in the right experience and interact with them as you go along through the uh, journey okay <clears throat> Let's uh, go ahead and open it up for questions. And that's what we do here. It's a Q&A webinar, we call it. This is a place you can come and ask questions as you work through your journey or work through your, um, your design process and your implementations. And here's a place that you can come and ask and get answers. We can't always build it for you step by step, but we can try to get you over the conceptual hurdles. All right, so let's work through the questions. I'm gonna back up here well is a yes but how could we do that <laughs> so yes if we charge you two hundred and fifty dollars a month or we charge you per user then we'd have a great budget we could hire in a, a huge team and have one-on-one -on -one implementation sessions with new users as you suggest but that's not going to be possible in the price range that we try to keep our software at is a in a very affordable to small and medium businesses uh, we that's our customer base small medium business not enterprise so we don't have concierge type service where you get one-on-one -on -one, um, hand holding and walkthroughs so we and i don't mean that in a bad way but that that is what you uh, are basically saying so what we try to do, we try very hard to do, is, is create a huge resource of um, documentation and videos in the community, uh, these weekly um, webinars that becomes a place where you can self-serve the knowledge and build it yourself, get help where you need it, okay? Uh, Angela says, I noticed in one of the videos on email list subscribers that the mail was tracked showing links click is it the same for all marketing emails you send out do you mean uh, for, okay well angel i'll clarify and just say what is what i can say is that in our marketing toolkit right if you create a marketing campaign or autoresponders yes all the emails that are sent out through that toolkit will have um visibility tracking meaning it was opened so opened statistics and clicked statistics for the links okay uh hilton says 
Question, can portal pages be shared between accounts? Like if I designed an experience and then wanted to use the same experience in another account. In a way, Hilton, the answer is yes. Uh, now you can't do it in a private way, but the way you can do it is to uh, contribute that portal page as a template to the template library. So if you'll, uh, in any account, if, as long as you have it turned on, you can click the template library and you'll see that you could contribute that as a portal page template, just like this one, and then download that one into another account. The other alternative would be just to grab, um, is to build it, just move it step by step, move the code over. Um, but we don't have the, I don't have a way for you to sort of indicate, I want to send or share this portal page tem template with another account and then define that account and do it that way. So the answer is no, no, partially, yes, partially. Okay. Okay, Izzy says, I'm a new user and have a very difficult time that the company with the contacts are combined as one. Is there any way to work around this issue? Well, Izzy, let me try to understand what you mean. So I think you mean company first is represented by a primary contact. Is that the gist of your question? Okay, so, so Izzy, when you add a company, to, and I'm just going to walk, walk you through a thought experiment here, okay? So if you, when you add a company to a CRM, how do you communicate with the company, right? What would you use to communicate with the company? Email, correct? So if you use email, then email is read by a person, not by a company, right? So that email is somebody's email, a person. So... You can't have, we, this is why all CRMs have this same challenge and is that, okay, well, I'm, I need to work with a company. I want to represent a company and I want to assign the things to this company. But the, in reality, what you're actually doing is communicating with a person. And so that becomes the primary contact. That's true. That's true. Um, and we... Well, that's true, and it may, may may be difficult to do that, but we are working towards it. the better the better the more common issue that people have with company first is that they need a primary contact to be a primary contact for more than one company, which as of now is not possible. Uh, but we are moving in the direction we have a planned task that will make that possible. Have the primary contact. Uh, be the primary for more than one company. Uh, in your case, you have you're doing business on a personal level and a company level with the same person. So as of now, the only workaround that you could use would be to have a different email address and keep them and make them as two different clients and work with them on a personal. You can, and when you're in in company first mode, you can still work with. Um, individuals, they don't have to be associated with the company. You still can work with them just as a contact and then work with a company in, in the same, in the same way and still be in company first mode. Yep. I get it. I get it. So you, you're having some challenges around that and that's something we are working towards trying to make more flexible and usable in those ways. All right, let's back up and see. Okay, Joby, I hope I'm not saying that wrong. How can we create a task or project from email? Okay, so Joby, let's clarify. As I understand your question, it's not possible right now, but let me clarify what, exactly what you want. You want to receive an email in your email account. You want to forward it, possibly, to some coded email address, and then it would create a task or a project around the using the data from that email. Is that where you're going? That's a fairly common functionality. Yep. 
so we do have plans in that direction, Joby, but not now. It doesn't have right exactly. Uh, further plans, and we have other plans uh, for the later part of the year to provide a deeper integration with email in general. If you are Google Workspace or Office 365, that kind of thing. Um, that would we would have more options around you could read your email even maybe in the in the platform and then be able to generate a project out of it directly there with with point and click and not have to use a forwarding email forwarding email that's coded with the correct um hash so that we can read it uh i'll continue with joby joby says they have to log in an email to us i think you mean you're using the messaging feature uh let's go there so there's two options here joby so out of the box uh sweet dash will when you send a new message you're sending what's called a, a a private message i think is the best way to talk about it it's not actual email it's the same type of messaging system that maybe you've seen with your bank uh, or or medical portal possibly, and this is a HIPAA compliant messaging system that will does not transmit the content of the message outside the platform. You send the message, the recipient will receive an email notification that says, "Yes, I you have a message," but out of the box they will have to log in to read that message, and that authentication of logging in is what protects that private data. That may be in that message could be sensitive health information something around hipaa that kind of thing and that is why that happens however you can make an adjustment using go to company settings here and we provide what we call convenience mode which means you're saying to the platform i don't need all that protection i don't need that privacy protection i would like to turn on this convenience mode and when this feature is enabled, your recipient will be able to simply reply to the email notification. With, and this means they don't have to log in, Joby, and they can reply to the email notification. It'll come back to a coded email address, which we will then in, uh, parse, and their response will be read and inserted into the secure messaging thread. Okay? So th when this is turned on, they will not have to log in. They'll be able to reply and um, that reply will be recorded and added into the thread. No, they cannot initiate that email. Yeah, it just replies, exactly. Now, if they, they can initiate a message if they go to the messaging. Um, and in the future, it's possible we could give you, say, like uh, we could coordinate a special email address that would somehow kick off that messaging back and forth. But in general, if they're going to email you, then it would be to your typical email address. They don't have, there's, there's not an email address for this box, for example. Yeah, something that we're thinking about for sure. Um, we're, we're looking at a lot of different options for integrating email, even though it's, even though email is quite insecure and it's basically the number one security vector in all hacks that you that you hear about almost every hack that you hear about on on the news or um however that you read about it all starts with email it all starts with somebody clicking a link or you know opening an attachment um so email is suspect number one in security but still doesn't seem to be going away right so we're definitely going to find way better ways to work with it that are a little more uh, accessible. So let's see, where are we here? Izzy says, where is the file saved when uploaded to a project task? Well, you can always access them from the task, Izzy. Uh, but also if you go into files, there's two ways to access. If you go into files and click project files or click projects, then you'll be able, each project will have its own folder. Okay. And you can see here, this one has two tasks or three tasks. Let's go into this one, collaboration on movie. You see it has one file in it, one task. Then each task will have its own 
um, folder here, and then each task, you'll be able to see any files that are attached to that task um, by clicking there, or you can actually, any of the files that are uploaded through the uh, files tab inside the project can be here under public files if they're uploaded by the client. Also, we provide a private project files folder that's only accessible to your internal staff. Okay, I think that answers that. All right, let's scroll down and see where we are. Hilton says, um, is this also tied to the mobile app with push notifications? So as of now, Hilton, um, our mobile app is a PWA, which is called a progressive web app. It gives us many, many, many advantages over a native app, but some disadvantages for now. So the many advantages are you can white label it. Your clients and customers can install the application on their device. Your with your logo, when they open it, it's your platform. Um, every anytime we make a uh, an addition to the platform, a new feature or something like that, it's instantly available. It's instantly accessible on that mobile app, so it's constantly updated. Um, one disadvantage is it's still not fully supported in the ways of things like push notifications. Um, but it will be, yeah, but it will be. So Android and iOS, Android a little faster than iOS, is move, are moving rapidly into the PWA game and enabling that step by step. One of the last things that I think Apple will let go of will be the push notifications. But when they do, we'll be there. And then the strategy of going with PWA will be fully justified. Then we'll have everything that in the positive column and nothing in the negative column. But for now, it's, the positive column is very long, very big, and we, we're currently accepting that push notifications is not possible. All right. As you said, if you could explain a little bit more how we could work in company first mode, still work on two levels, um and just have a link as i saw a different software using two separate contact profiles for business and personal and just have a link as linked contact so izzy let me just let's let's clarify a bit so i, I think what you're saying is that you have someone who has a business and a correlated corporation probably that you're doing the tax taxes for and of course, they also have a personal tax um, that you need to file. And so you're working with them on the personal level as well. And so you want to have two different presentations for them, one personal and one business. Is that correct? But you want to use the same email address. Do, do they not have a business email address and a personal email address? Because that would be the easiest solution here. Yeah. That would be the easiest. Well, then if you if you have different email addresses, then I think you don't have a problem at all. You just add one email address as the business client and one email address as the personal client. And they have, in our system, they're completely different. And so you can set them up differently and 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 give them a different experience, work with them in the way that I think you're intending. And it doesn't matter if just because you're in company first, okay, so the personal side, just because you're in company first, you don't need to, yes, the portal will have two logins, one with one email address, one with the other. Yes. But you want them to be able to switch easily between the two. Well, it's a small issue. I mean, is it an issue that's unworkable, un unacceptable? I mean, maybe if you, if you if you if your bar is way up there, but I think most people would not run run away screaming from the fact that they have to remember two passwords. Um, but yes, I, I understand the utility of of having that person be able to associate them, and then somehow they can log in with. Um, 
one of those two email addresses and then have some alternative to switch from their one mode into another mode. Um, yes, I understand the utility, but it wouldn't be a high priority for us at the moment. Yeah, I have to be honest. It's something that it would be nice to have, but we have many, a lot of other things that we're trying to, to bring to the table. Um, but yeah, recognized as, as something that wouldn't be nice. <clears throat> wouldn't it make an issue that the profile name is the same name? I th think when you mean profile name, you mean just the first and last name or? No, only email address is the, is the unique identifier uh, in our system. So you can't have two users with the same email address. That's, that's not going to happen something we validate against, that's the unique identifier. Everything else, it's not a problem if they have the same first name and last name, for example. Uh, when you go to search and filter for that person, you would come up with two results if you have first name, last name, but you would be able to tell them apart by, because they have separate emails. Yes, you can have two contacts with the same name, just separate emails. That's correct. You can do that. Uh, I mean, it could happen anyway, right? You could have two John Smiths or two Mike Bakers. You know, if you're in the U.S., you probably met a lot of people with the same names. Yeah. Okay, good. Good. I, uh, I appreciate that, or at least giving me the opportunity to, to understand exactly what your issue is. <clears throat> we definitely, we, oh, we're definitely moving in that direction more so because we have, a lot of customers who have multiple Sweet Dash accounts and what they want to do because they're running multiple companies. So they say have uh, three different companies, three different Sweet Dash accounts set up uniquely for each brand, and they uh, tire of logging out and logging in, logging out and logging in. So we are we we are having we are planning and have uh, a mid mid level or mid term plan to offer an account switcher functionality. Uh, when we cross that bridge, I will keep in mind that, that that we might should look for way to look for a way to uh, allow you to manually would be a manual thing where you would say, "I need to bridge link or somehow link these two two uh, clients together and say these clients are the same. They want to be able to have a an account switcher, and if you did that as the super admin, for example." then that would be enough validation for us and we can enable that in their account. And so then next time they logged in with either, either of those, they would be offered a switcher functionality, which when they switched the first time we would, in, we would force them to enter the password for the second account. Then once they did that once successfully, we would record that f flag. And after that, they would be able to switch seamlessly between them because they've, not only have you authorized that functionality, but they've authorized it or they've proven that they can authenticate in both accounts. Still would be easier to have it just linked to contacts instead of clutter the contact list. Maybe, maybe Izzy. I mean, if you have two contacts, you would want to be able to navigate to one or the other of them and so therefore they would need to both be in the list, I think, or yeah, maybe I, I, I'm not saying there's, there's not some clever solution to it, but we, we, we'll, um, we'll keep focused on that. Cool. Okay. Let me, let me scroll back and look for questions. Anybody has any questions? Just don't hesitate to j throw those in. Uh, Joby says, when does the ticket module roll out? Well, Tickets, support tickets, I think you're referring to, Joby. That's going to be a third third quarter thing. So it didn't make it in the second quarter and won't won't be out by the end of the second quarter. Uh, so think third quarter now. That's going to be pushed. Well, what you can do, um, what you can do, Izzy, is record a video, do a screencast video showing that, and send it in to help at sweetdash.com. Just send the, the video in or link to the video and just explain and show what, what you mean. And just mention that that should be attention to me and we'll take a look. Yep. And that's no problem at all. 
happy to look, happy to see it. Good way to, for us to understand exactly what what you mean and and options how that could work with us. All right, backing up through the questions. I think we're all caught up. Is there a way to search for a client by name? Yes, ma'am. Yes, Kristen. Um, if you go to contacts, you just use the filter uh, that's provided here in the contacts list. Just click filter, and then you'll just search right here. Okay. So as you say, whoops, let me get that. Okay. And then you'll you'll go directly. You'll load that client, and then you can go directly into their um, profile there, the contact dashboard, we call it here. Okay. All right. Let's see. Izzy says, how do we use a portal template to integrate into my user? Okay. So let's, let's clarify a little bit, Izzy. So when you say a portal template, I believe you mean a portal page template, which is this, which would just load a portal page. You would use that to create a portal page, and then you can assign that portal page to your clients, either as just a portal page that they would access in the, from the menu, or um, as a start page, which means that that would be the page that they see when they log in. So for example, Let's look at here. So this is a, one of the ones that you'll see in the in the template library. And this is set as the start page for this particular client or actually the circle that this client's in, the payroll circle. And when th they log in, they're redirected immediately here. And this becomes a de facto dashboard for uh, this client or this or all the clients in a particular circle. So yeah, I would recommend First of all, understanding circles, you can do that by watching Simple Start Series Episode 1, and then recommend understanding start pages. There are a few tips and tricks videos that highlight that. Search for start page in the documentation, and you'll find that. So yes. All right. Uh, Edris says, when will courses be available? I think you mean LMS. And Shamika says, will the calendar and email sync make it to Q2? And let me see what Luis says. Okay. Uh, LMS, LMS, when will it be available? I can't really give you an, a number on that, Edris. It's going to be still several, several weeks away. Yeah. It's something that we're still in, in development on, but um, as explained in our last webinar, things don't always go exactly as you plan and you find ways to make things better or make underlying functionality better as you start to build and it just adds and adds. So that's that's sort of the situation that we're in with with several areas that we're pushing in is we're taking extra time uh, to to build functionality that's that's stronger, that's more future proof, that provides um, better overall functionality as we move into the future. And Shamika, the calendar and email sync, uh, very similar. Calendar is really getting pretty close now. The two-way calendar integration with with Google, and that will integrate into the scheduling toolkit. And so that is very close. Um, email sync, still looking at that one and trying to weigh the options about how we would like to do that. So there's, there's several options that are on the table. Uh, <clears throat> some parts of it have been, are, are, look, are being started, but still not sure about that one. Make it in Q2, I would say probably not. You wouldn't see an actual full featured some kind of email sync that um would be available in q2 yep same same logic and and um reality as the others yeah all right louis says any way to create a buy button with a sweet dash form that can be placed on my site 
instead of assigning an invoice profile and having them check their email to pay, Prospect can buy with three clicks currently, way more clicks with Sweet Dash. Not at the moment, Luis, but it is something that we are definitely... Uh, ele- One sec here. Sorry that about that. LMS will be the first place that this will be functional. Uh, so part of the LMS build is around a new landing page functionality, which will be using the uh, content block editor, the builder that we currently have on portal pages. So what will happen there, Luis, is there will be a, a new type of block that will be implemented in that place that you'll be able to configure the pricing, the payment functionality, how you would like to pay. Do you want to pay all at once? Do you want to allow installment payments? Are you putting them on a subscription? Those are the options that will be out. Those are some of the options. Also free would be an option. Uh, and then on that landing page, part of that blocks functionality will be a buy right now, right here, Enter your credit card number right here, and then uh, all the functionality that you design around that experience will be uh, kicked off directly from that purchase, which will happen, yes, either on your website as an embed, as you say, or directly with that on that landing page using a friendly URL, what we call friendly URL, which are similar to this. And you'll this is a list of friendly URLs that you can create on your own, or you can in uh, intake forms and on, on all the landing pages that you'll have, you'll be able to create these, which will give you the ability to uh, create like your URL, your custom URL backslash uh, this slug is what it's called in the web world, which is a strange, uh, strange functionality to call something. But uh, yep, that slug, and you'll be able to create that Custom. So the answer is coming up, coming soon. Is that Luis? That's that's exactly what you were after. Cool, great. That's that's part of the reason that that um, things are a little slower with the LMS is we're building out all that functionality, a lot of moving parts, more than just an LMS. Um, we don't want to put it out until it's ready to be you know, used in a, in a functional way, meaning I need to be able to charge for it. I need to be able to uh, give it for free or have uh, drip style content. So there's a lot of levels that we want to uh, have from the beginning. Okay. Kristen says it would be great to have a search at the top of every screen where you could quickly pull up a client or project by name without so many clicks to get to filtering. I agree, Kristen. I agree. So that is something we have been thinking about and do think about. Yep. Um, from the standpoint of, so we can put it into a, a desktop, right? I mean, look up here. Look at all this room that we're just not using, right? So I get it, Kristen. But remember that Sweet Dash is fully responsive. And if you if you shrink this down to a mobile device, then we are maxed out up here, believe it or not. This this icon, these icons, and this profile, we don't have any more room to add up here. So what is more likely is that we will um, maybe move one of these or find a way to get a search icon into this place. Then when you search, it'll be an overlay, uh, a dedicated overlay that will give you more options to search, for example, you would be able to say, I want to search in projects or I want to search in contacts. And yes, do that search and go directly to that contact. So it's also possible that we could put the the uh, search box in here only in desktop resolutions. And then as it goes uh, down, uh, lower resolution to a tablet, iPad, uh, into a mobile handheld device, then we could replace that with some other uh, way to get to the search. So these are things that you know, we just are moving towards and thinking about. 
All right, Noel. Yeah, good answer there, Noel. That's 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 close. Um, Luis, she said. Noel says, "Hi, Luis. The closest thing we have to a shopping cart functionality is work request." And yes, um, we do have a lot of customers that are using the work request functionality in that way. They use the itemized version of work request, and um, and then enable the setting that requires that the work request be paid for, see here, itemized, and then force payment immediately. So then on the client side, what it looks like is they just basically add items to a list that looks much like an invoice. And they're saying, okay, I would like to do use this service. I need to execute that service. I want this service, X, Y, Z, and then submit. And the very next thing they see is an invoice that has those exact line items on the invoice with the associated values added up. Then they'll pay for that when they uh, use their credit card and pay, then the admin will receive that work request in this list, be notified, and then you can convert that work request directly even to a task or a project and, and begin work on it. So that's kind of the flow that Noel is, is indicating there, okay. Yes, and if you have feature suggestions, uh, vote.suite-.com is the place to submit those. And then they, they don't sit there and, and go stale. In fact, everyone that goes there is going to look at every all the suggestions and upvote the ones that they like, conceivably downvote the ones they don't like, and we will uh, know very easily what the community is asking for based on the rankings of those features. So yes, please contribute to that. Uh, even if you, if it's just voting, Noel provides a link there. All right. Izzy says, when will it be possible to assign a contact to a few companies as primary contact? This is my se second difficulty now, since I have clients with a few companies. Izzy, that is a pretty big priority for us. Yes. It's something that we hear quite a lot from CPAs and your CPA, you told us. So we hear that quite a lot from the accounting niche that they have some go-getters out there with three, four companies and they need to have them as a primary contact for all of those companies. So yes, we realize that is somewhat of a limitation and a difficulty for you. So we are, we understand the architecture, how that can work. It is possible. Um, just looking for a place in the current uh, development pipeline for that to enter and become the priority in one of the paths, development paths. So I don't have a number, an actual number for you now or a deadline, but I think you can expect it would be in the next month or two, somewhere in that range. Okay. Um, again, yes. And see, Izzy, you see Noel has shown you that that is a pretty popular request. Yep. And so we're watching that and, and constantly looking at this voting board and I went through it the other day, actually, and almost all the top items are either on our in current development or on our very, very uh, near term, short term, midterm radar. So we're moving in every area that you see there. All those are underway. Okay, D, how are you? Uh, D, I think D, D, where are you joining us from? I think you just dropped in for us. Uh, D says, how do you recess? How do you make a recessed button like in the Mad Mad Max demo account with the credit card? Um, Houston, oh, that's right. Okay, Houston, a recessed button like in Mad Max demo. Um, let me make sure I know what you're talking about here. Recess button, Mad Max demo. Uh, was it on my screen, D, or you saw it somewhere else? Okay. Yeah, I'm not sure what you mean, recessed button. Yeah, I'll wait for an answer, but I'm not sure. I'm not exactly sure what you mean right now, D. Okay, let's look. Uh, okay. Thank you, Noel. 
So how can we work with it now? Once the company contact is divided and just linked, it should not be an issue. I think you mean the primary contact, multiple primary contacts. I, I don't really have a great answer for you, Izzy, other than um, mo multiple email addresses would be the, the thing that I can recommend now that would work. So then they would become three different users with three different logins if they had three different companies. Yeah. I re it's really, there's really no other way that's like a hack or some, some workaround that is clean that could really work. It's really the only way. Uh, Hilton, yes, it is a third-party service that we are uh, using. Yep. Okay. I posted a picture in the community. Okay, voting bar. Let's see. It's another page video on a portal page. Hmm. Yeah, I still don't. I still can't. I can't. Can't figure out what you mean, D. And I can't. I don't have access to. I'm not able to uh, jump around too much. All the, all my screens are are taken up, so I'm not really able to jump around and jump in the community and look for it now wouldn't be a, not a good use of time here but uh maybe send it can you send in to help at sweet com? just send in the picture or whatever example and ask them you know how did you make this how what 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 functionality is this they'll be able to help you yeah that'll be the best way okay let me scroll back Recessed button. Look at the man. Yeah, I really, I just really don't know. Now, I mean, I'm not sure if maybe you mean the. Um, let's see. Yeah, I can't figure it out. Sorry. On a portal page. Yeah. You don't mean in this, in this, um, maybe you mean here. And th this kind of button? This was in a video. That's what I'm trying to, that's what I'm trying to identify. These, these steps were part of a video. All right. Well, I'm, <laughs> I feel like I'm definitely not being helpful. I apologize for that. Okay. Is there a way to do a checklist style? It would look like it would have been, it looked like it would have been a checklist. Oh, I think you mean on a dashboard, uh, like a task widget. Maybe that's where you mean. Uh, there is a, what's called a my tasks widget, which looks like this. This is where you mean. Anyway, this this is a widget that shows all the tasks that are assigned to this particular client. So he can see the task, click go to my task, or he can click view task. And these are just showing whether the task is complete or not. These are not in any kind of, they're not in an order that um, will indicate, okay, this is step one, this is step two. And in fact, these could be from uh, two completely different projects. In this case, they're not, I don't think, but in any case, there was a credit card in the bottom. Yeah, I'm not sure. I don't think, I don't, I don't know, D. So yeah, just send that in to the help team and that'll be the best way. Okay, guys, any other questions? I think we're pretty well caught up. And if there's, if there's not, we'll go ahead and start closing out. But um, in general, this would be, this is what we're here for, so. Any plans for a Kanban style layout in the future? We have that now, uh, Luis. So if you go inside a project, you can choose from a project list, which would be your, your task list, which would be here. And then if you wanna see this in a Kanban uh, format, you can sit, click that there. And there it is. So you can either run it in this configuration 
I'm on the client side, so I don't have any other configurations. Or you can run it uh, in per. Um, this one is per category. It shows the categories. Let's go on the client side. And we are looking to expand this as well uh, and offer more options around the Kanban. I, I think Noelle's yelling at me because she likes me to say Kanban. Is that right, Noelle? Or, or am I doing it right? I can't remember. Maybe you can, maybe, you, oh, I'm saying it correctly? Okay, I was going to say, maybe you can create an animated GIF or GIF, no, animated GIF and show it to me. <laughs> All right, so yes, we have status view. Uh, which would work by the categories, or you can change it to assignee view, which will let you work based on uh, who the tasks are assigned to. Okay, so you can do it either way. If you're just working internally, this is the way. Uh, this is the way uh, most people would would do it, and just have each person assigned, or I guess you know status. In the future, we we want to be we want to look at options for creating uh, what they call swim lanes, which would allow a, a horizontal scrolling system that where, where each uh, person that you see in a signee view would have a, a lane, for lack of a better word, a swim lane. And then you would scroll down and then Maya would have her, um, her lane. And those, those lanes are, would be individual per person as you scroll down. But each lane would have a status view so that you can say, okay, this is Maya's board. She's moving from open to assigned, and then now it's, this is in her working list, et cetera. Or you could, uh, and you could do that per assignee. Yeah. So if you go to the tasks, to a project and go to tasks, D, or I'm sorry, Kristen, see here from uh, go inside a project. So when you go inside a project, you get all these options related to the single project. Team talk, client talk, files. Here's, here, what I was referring to earlier, you can upload files inside a project and they can be specific and contained within this project. Calendar, timers, phases, etc. But Kanban's uh, one of the options there. Okay. And that's per project. So you, you have, yes, exactly. Can all the fields and titles be renamed in a project be renamed? D says, yes, D. So one of the, what you, where you want to go is, okay, I'm on the admin side. You want to go to categories, we call it. And categories is our universal sort of um, just generic name for all the little categories, statuses, types, priorities, everything related uh, platform-wide you can find here. And you can go in into all the task types, task statuses. You can create all your own, and you can set one as a default. So you, you can even reorder them, and then whatever you do here will be reflected in all the drop-down menus that are throughout the platform. Izzy says, is there a way to move files from one folder to the other? And the answer is yes. So in any file, or any folder, excuse me, you can go into that folder. Let's see if I can jump onto... Uh, might be easier in a place where I know there's more files in a test account. Okay, Hilton, I'll, I'll get to your question too. But in any one of these, you can move. Let's start here. Ah, that's what I'm afraid of. Let's go to... Uh, Every client will have this these folders inside. Okay, so now I can say I want to uh, so can't move this one. I'm looking for one that I can move here. Anyway, there's an option up here that says move when you get into the right mode. But there are certain places that you won't be able to move. Here we go. So I can move here and I can say move. And now it's going to show me a folder tree. And I can designate and move like that. Okay, Izzy. Yeah. And Hilton says, how does client talk work? How does the client know you sent them a request or message? Email notification, Hilton. 
So same as with messaging, it will just be an email notification that will let them know that they have a client talk message. Client talk is, is restricted uh, usually to a project manager and above kind of roles, not your teammate. Your teammates who are assigned a project won't be able to talk to your client. Um, but anyone that's assigned in a project will be able to use team talk, which is the uh, generic or is the method for communicating <clears throat> solely about a project to keep the talk or keep the the discussion inside a project about a project and that's a team talk functionality which is this okay and Kristen snuck a question in I maybe didn't see here it is is there any issue is there any issue with having a flow that includes forms and putting the same forms embedded in portal pages no there shouldn't be Kristen you can use a form inside a flow you want to you'll be using an update form and then yes the update forms are the ones that you'll be embedding in portal pages let's see your response to I'm Kristen says I'm trying to direct the client to enter the info through the through the flow, but also have it available to submit through their form in their portal pages. Sometimes they don't have all the info requested when I send the flow and need to return it. Yeah, so you have options to let's let's show um, here, for example, we were there just a minute ago. Uh, in just a second, I can D. So see here, Kristen, how these are pre-filled with the information, right? So this, yes, so you have the option of doing this. You can either leave these. This means that this information is in the database for this particular uh, custom field. So uh, a lot of our customers will use this as the, as the as to create and embed an update form, which is exactly what it's why it's named the update form. You can allow them to update this information, not only and they can see what information is currently on file for them in the database, and they can change that. They can update that. And you can build this form very specifically to for only the fields that you want them to update. And others can be left, you know, in the background and not updatable. So you can design this process however you'd like, right? Uh, you can also display these forms and, and say, okay, do not show the current value. Even though we have a value, you, you can tell it not to show it, uh, but you can also instruct it, the form to show it. And the way you'll see those options when you go into the form, each field option. Yeah. That's a real common uh, functionality there. Great. And a nice way to use it. Are they linking the next step button to the next form? In this case, yes. In this case, I was, you know, this is a video that's in our, um, and Sweet Dash Academy is one of the ones I was showing you earlier. If you watch this, the video, you'll see how this was all strung together uh, using circles and circle changes and, and a, a, a lot of key building blocks uh, that will allow you to create your own sort of customizable flow. Another, uh, let's see if I can find the right page here. I think this is one I use as an example sometimes. Yes. Okay. So here's a good example, right? So this is a um, a dashboard that was made and that is using dynamic. Uh, Angela, that was. Dun, 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 dun. Let me get there. Make sure you know. It's this one. Forms plus lead gen funnel. And you can, this same one is on YouTube as well, if you'd prefer to watch it there. Uh, so you can see that. Let's go back to here. Yes. So this is a uh, a portal page that is using dynamic data placeholders in many places. Okay. All these are dynamic data placeholders. They're returning the value associated with this particular client. If another client logs in here, uh, now, of course, this is static, but this is dynamic. If another client logs in, he'll see the value that's in the database for him or for her. Uh, but you also can say, okay, well, here's what we have for you right now. But here's what I've what I've done here is linked to another portal page using this button. I've linked to another portal page where an update form sits, and I've designated which fields I would like to allow them to update. Okay, so in this case, 
John Wick here say, no, you know what, I want to I want to uh, retire when I'm 70, for example. So they can make the change, update the profile, and you can redirect them back to that same dashboard. And now they will see instantly in the same moment that, oh, sorry, that's not C. That button has changed since I built this originally. So when I go back to that same page, you will see that the uh, data is now fed from the database after the update. So now the retirement target is 70. And you can extrapolate this concept in many, many different ways and build whatever kind of functionality you need around this. Even this uh, little report here, this is from a dynamic field, right? So this, this message that you send can be customizable per contact. And you can use the same dashboard, and that's, that's the way to do it, is use the same dashboard for an entire circle for many more people, right? Many, many people, and then uh, have it modify itself using dynamic data or show this row to only that circle and show this row to only another circle. There's many ways to do this. And in fact, in the, um, <clears throat> I don't have a great example right now, or right, let's see, I need to get logged in the community. If you logged into the community, you would see that there are, um, there's some posts there by several street mates who really kind of go through and give, um, I think the word is exhaustive details uh, about how their setup is. And if you get a cup of coffee and read through these, these posts, you will find yourself again light bulbs going off like oh yeah okay i could do that i could borrow that strategy i could borrow that idea and really accomplish something kind of cool right d says that button is in the uh, uh for payment methods on our portal page okay i think i know what you mean now d let's go look let's look together think you mean here and this, what this is, let's just make sure before I start to explain. If I'm wrong, I'm, I'm really out of ideas. This one? I'm hoping for a big yes with an exclamation point. Yay, all right. Okay, so this is the My Billing Dashboard, D. This is not a portal page. I think that's where I was, I was disconnecting. So all your clients have access to this My Billing Dashboard. Well, there is a setting to turn it off if you have that option, want that option. But here's where they can come and add a new card on file. They can add a card on file. If they do that, that card will be listed here. And then, thank you, Noel. And then um, when next time they have an invoice, they'll be able to play, pay with a card on file. If they had a subscription, that would be listed here. See, it says no subscriptions. But if they had one, it would be. I think let's have a better example because I think there's one here. They would be able to cancel that subscription, change the payment myth method associated with that subscription. And in the future, we'll uh, we're working towards the ability for them to upgrade, downgrade. Here's where you mean, here's what you mean. They'll be able to upgrade and downgrade to uh, different plans uh, that are in the same category, which you design to uh, give them different experiences. So if they bought, if you have a bronze, silver, and gold plan, for example, the gold plan will have access to more resources in the portal, more pages, more files, more shared folders, etc. cetera. Uh, and then you can build yourself essentially a SaaS type experience or a member, member site type experience where they can pay to have access to the bronze resources or silver or gold. Yeah. So you can't replicate that look on a portal page for something different like a checklist. You could. I mean, you could. Sure. I mean, we provide all the tools to make a column here or make two columns and build the similar uh, layout. The checklist part is a little bit of a... Um, it's not something we have a perfect functionality for now, but that, that does bring up an idea of maybe just a very simple checklist block that would work much like a subtasks work in um, in projects. We're a little bit over time, but let me just take a second here and I'll go into, I'll, I'll show a task and also just make sure I'm going to the right place here. 
Let's try this. Okay, so here's a task, right? But if I wanted to create a subtasks, see how these are created. And they're quite easy. I could say uh, echo. And see, here's your checklist, right? And then your users could, now this is in a task. So they would have a, say you're giving a, a, a task to someone, but you want to outline for them and you're on, on the phone together maybe and you're brainstorming here are the steps to achieve the task and so what this acts is just like a checklist but what if we had the same functionality say for example uh, D as a block in the portal page what if we made a, a checklist block and it worked exactly like this with the percentage complete is that something you would use it's a pretty good idea I think yeah seems like we already had the functionality put it into a block, allow you to do that. Okay, Kristen, I hear you. I hear you. That's good. I am screenshotting this now. So we'll go on my list and we'll examine what exactly would take to make that happen. Cool. Good ideas, guy. Everyone. Okay, let me look here so we can't remember and there are plans to customizable playmen. What I'm uh, Kristen says, are there plans to have customizable payment plan options for customers where you could pick the dates and amounts of the charges? We call that installment payments, Kristen, and it's exactly as you describe, and it's in active development at the moment. I think it's you will see it on the roadmap, yeah, on sweetdash.com backslash roadmap. Um, installment payments, yes, and you would... And not only that, what you say, where you can pick the dates and the amounts, uh, but each each payment will have, you can configure our trigger actions um, functionality. So you could say, well, after payment one, I'm going to uh, change them from circle A to circle B. And then after payment two, I'm going to, then I'm going to perform these actions, maybe move them to a, uh, email marketing list or something like that. So not only will you have these payment options, but you'll be able to integrate them with the, with the, um, you'll be able to integrate automate, use automations basically with those payment options, which will really empower you to make changes and customize the experience for them based on that. Yeah. Okay. So that's, that's something that you can expect in a few weeks. Yeah. Before the end of the quarter, I think. Okay. Uh, thank you, everyone, for your time today. I appreciate your your input, patience. Um, thanks for the conversation and the feedback. Everybody, and some good ideas here, especially for the... I really like this idea about the tasks block for the content block editor that you can put anywhere, including the... Um, in portal pages and it will eventually be moving that whole concept to the dashboard where you'll be able to customize the dashboard even further uh, based on circle affiliations etc so a lot of powerful changes coming throughout the platform a lot to look forward to okay everyone thanks very much thanks for your time today have a great rest of your day thanks Kristen thanks Hilton thank you Angela thank you D have a great rest of your day we're signing off. Thank you.